I just wanted to What's use up, guys? Welcome to the Shag News Twitch me. channel. Today is the 14th day of March. We're here. It's another Monday afternoon. The wide world of electronic sports. We're here with a host with the most, talking Brian, Rod, and a freshly returned Phil Visu. Guys, what's going on? Yo, Chris, how you doing today? Thank you so much for the intro. Uh, yes, it's that time again. Already time for another wide world of electronic sports. Easy as ABC. We're doing episode one, two, three today. I hope you all are ready to settle in. Uh, of course, thank you to my co-host, Rodney Conyers Jr. How you doing today? I'm doing really well. Excited to talk some games. You already know. Awesome. And we are joined this week. Was missing last week. It's looking pretty mysterious this week, though. Is that is that really the phenomenal, the Phil Visu? It is. Uh, I haven't quite returned to my full spectra yet. I will later on stream. All right. But I so, can assure you, it is I. Awesome. Well, while Phil's still buffering in, we'll be able to talk some esports. We'll get all the great hot takes. Let's get into it, guys. We got a, a fully packed episode 123 to talk about today. We have uh, a lot of news, but first we need to get into, I think, the news of all news. It might be the most important news of a generation. I think so. Um, of a community, uh, of a, a a sphere of people like that involve everyone from the fighting game community to esports to influencers to streamers, uh, and, and everything in between. I mean, this was the internet uh, exploded right here. This is. This is peak internet, people. You're, you're not going to see anything better than this. EE did it. He got it done. Man, Phil, man did it. Phil, how, how did you do it? What did you do? Phil, what did you do? Well, the truth of the matter is I went there with one goal in mind. We're talking about the streamer awards, right? Streamer awards, yes, of course. Of course, the streamer awards. But then as I was scrolling and perusing through my Twitter, I noticed that my queen, my angel, my reason for being was dressed up in just the finest dress you ever would see on anybody. And I noticed she hashtag streamer awards, so I knew she would be in attendance. So I camped that open bar like a wino in the streets. And then she walked in, and of course, greeted by so many people, did a red carpet interview that stole the show. And in that brief 10 second window, when she was adjusting something on her phone, I swooped and I, I greeted her and I told her, how I was such a fan, and it would be an honor, it would make my, my, my week, my year, my existence to have a photo. And she said, sure, would you like me to take the mask? I said, no, you're perfect as you are. And we took that photo, and it was glorious, glorious. I introduced myself, she introduced herself, and I said, I'll talk to you later. And she says, you bet. There you go. A moment you'll one. never forget. Absolutely not. I've already, man, Phil. I've already archived it on my Twitter bio, actually, the date we met. So. I'm yeah, sure your friends. children, your grandchildren, their children and grandchildren will keep the story alive and forever remember the time when Grandpa Visu met Pokimane. Phil, so you're telling me you simp stalked the open bar until you saw her come by. Is that what you're is that is that what we're getting at here? No, it was just convenient that she walked in while I was getting all okay. those free drinks. Me and Charles were just liquoring up. It was like, <laughs> listen, these streamers make enough money, okay? I'm not going to turn down there. You know what I'm saying? So we had a good time. We had a good time. But now, nah, Pokey, real talk, she's an awesome person, and it was dope to finally meet her. So I had a good time. And the streamer awards themselves were dope. You know? No complaints. It was really, it was really good. Actually, we, we are going to talk a little bit about the streamer awards later on in the show, uh, because, like I said, it was kind of some crossover there between the fighting game community and uh, just the event going on. Um, but really, this this year is the highlight. Like we couldn't save it for the you know feel good moment of the day, whatever. No, no, this is so important. It had to be front and center, first news on the show. I mean, it's it's a W so big. One must kneel. We had to kneel. Had a Jenny flat. Kneel a bit. Hit the knee. It's All a beautiful right. photo of y'all too. I I want this on a postcard or some sort, or you know, just a get well soon or something. It is a classy photo, classy event. Um, I'm going to have it printed and embroidered on a shirt. Nice. Embroidered, not like screen printed or we're airbrushed. Doing, we're not doing that cheap shit. 
No. Okay. Get the sewing kit out. Gotcha. She talk to him, Phil. Let's get it. Thanks, City Trends. Play with me. <laughs> you, should sell them. you should uh you should make them sell them on your merch store for like two hundred dollars a piece, you know what I mean? Maybe not quite that high of a price point, but well I mean it if if you're talking quality materials and quality stitching, then you charge as much as you like. It just might be an EE exclusive, huh, to be honest. It's the way it works, exactly. Yeah, no, that is that is an exclusive. That is a W you can take with you for the rest of your life. Congratulations on getting the the, the picture, the the one you've been waiting for for your forever. I uh, so what's next? Like, I, have you peaked? Is is this it for Phil? There's no such thing as peak when it comes to Phil Visu. Stay tuned. We got All one right. on the horizon. <laughs> love it absolutely love it all right let's move on to uh the smash news of the day uh first though we got to get into collision 2022 big event organized by finally rj happened over the weekend we had a lot of top tier talent um at this you could pretty much call it a major it was a new jersey major for sure uh we got leo tweak dark Wizzy, quid light mars spargo so many people and you know what happened, everybody. You can see it on the stream. You can see who was fighting in the grand finals. Spargo and Tweak, uh, and then Spargo took it all. I mean, Spargo is just hot off of um, Summit. So, guys, take it away. What would you think of Collision? Um, Collision, uh, first of all, it's a part of the trifecta that's, that is going to be Tri-State Smash this year. Yeah. I guess maybe starting at the beginning of next year as well. But um it's just nice to see tri-state being um just recognized as the strong region that it is not just only on the sticks or in front of the camera but behind the scenes as well you know before we had like all the sagas and evo and genesis and all these wonderful events happening on the west coast tri-state didn't have anything but now we got collision uh and this collision from what i've seen has completely stepped it up from the last one not saying that 2019 was bad but this one is just in a completely different stratosphere um and then, of course, we got Apex coming back, too. I know we talked a little bit about the Smash World Tour announcements, um, but that's coming back, and I believe that is in Secaucus, New Jersey. Can't quite remember where it is. And then, of course, Let's Make Big Moves. But anyway, though, it's nice to see Spargo do well. Um, it does suck that he's still on Twitter, if I'm not mistaken, but it does feel good uh, as somebody who's been in the community a long time like ourselves to see somebody this young finally hit that stride. You know, the stride that they were on before is still a very great one. You know, getting second and third, you know, nothing to complain about. But first is obviously hits different. And, you know, when you're getting not only first, but you're getting it over the likes of MK Leo, uh, you know, Tweet, Light. I mean, a lot of fan favorites, Mars, you know, you name it, Quid, you know, another young phenom as well. I mean, it just really speaks to the caliber of talent. Big shout out to Spargo. Spargo is literally manifesting his destiny right now it's beautiful to see and even you know you go back to the last the previous summit that tweak won mm -hmm. you look go back to main stage you know comments from these guys mk leo tweak like yes yeah, spargo's a like he's an absolute problem he could very well be the best and now he's living up to that and it's, it wasn't a matter of if it was a matter of when you mm -hmm. know when happened at summit four i mean just terrific show in there the next day after he won that goes and wins the G4 Invitational. The next week comes and wins Collision. I mean, that's back to back to back. Elite talent right in your face. And then like the even bigger test having to do it through a bracket type format like that. So for me, I'm very happy for Spargo. I've been a Spargo fan for a very long time. Yeah. Glad to see him get his kind of comeuppance. And I don't think this, I think this is a this usher in a great era of Smash. We no longer have just Leo just dominating at the top, right? He can be challenged. He can be beaten. Even Tweak taking a set off of uh, taking a set off of him again at Collision, right? That's how Tweak was able to finish second behind Spargo. So it's a great era we're in for Smash Ultimate right now, and I think it's only going to continue to trend upwards. Likewise. And um, you know this I mean, this kid is just something special. Um, but the, I'm not willing to say the torch has been passed. I'm not willing to say that the the throne has been vacated by Leo yet. We're just getting things started. Okay, it's going to be a long, good summer coming up, and I can't wait to see. It really is. Um, you know, just just to add to that a little bit, when you see somebody like Spargo again, you can't really help but to do anything besides smile. And, you know, we have seen some of the naysayers. Well, you know, that was Summit. That was G4. Those were invitationals, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, cool. That's fine. You know, he's going to get his flowers. Just give it some time. Now, I was in the camp of thinking like, okay, 
maybe in two tournaments, three tournaments from now, he's going to get that first fat dub. He's going to shut everybody up. He did it immediately at the next one. And I think that says a lot, you know, we don't get to see talent like this very often. I think, again, not to keep comparing him, because I don't want to take anything away from him, but the last time we've seen somebody like this, this dominant, this fresh out the gate, would have been Leo. But if you think about it, Leo has been around for quite some time now. Like, Leo's not the new guy anymore. You know, he's kind of the OG at this point. And so it's nice to see Spargo kind of, you know, walk a similar path, but almost paving it in a slightly different way for himself. Um Again, I don't know if any teams are going to go back and watch this, but damn it, what is the holdup? You know, maybe Sparkle's holding out for the right team, something, but we got to get this kid in New Jersey and ASAP. This kid's the talk? funny future. He's the funny future. Talk? Can I talk? Talk to, talk to him. He got a sponsor. He got a sponsor that ain't announced it yet. My theory is this. The sponsorship was supposed to be announced to Genesis. Genesis got pushed back. They said, you know what? We're going to wait till Genesis. Now, it's a little puzzling because you think to yourself, well, why wouldn't you just do it before Summit or something like that? Maybe the ink's not dry yet, but somebody is funneling some money to this kid for some sort of uh, off the books or on the books, not public yet, arrangement, okay? My mm. sources tell me it's a team. It's a European team. That's that's Ooh. what my sources tell me. It was a okay. European team. I don't know too much more beyond that. I'm still doing some investigating, but my sources tell me he's part of a European team and that that announcement is imminent. Impending. Philly the return Beezus. of the PGR. Oh, they're gonna want. They're gonna want that. They're gonna want that uh, name attached. Don't worry about that. Okay. You you're, it you're, outfit, you're doing your outfit a service by bringing us this uh, hard hitting undercover uh, journalism uh, right here. The, uh, the 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 rumors. You know the the what you what you're hearing through the grapevine is very exciting. And uh, yeah, it's super plausible. I mean, you know this guy's gonna get picked up by a big team um so if it was like an established european esports organization uh that's not yes i, I wouldn't be surprised yeah. um and yeah the the timing um around genesis maybe was you know something that was supposed to happen and uh being uh pushed back you're absolutely right that's it's a great prediction uh we'll, we'll see what happens yeah thank we you will. for bringing that of course well uh, yeah, that's a collision. I mean, it was, like Rod was saying, a huge turnout of talent. And just like you said, uh, it's going to show that um, Tri-Cities is becoming, you know, one of the big hot spots for Smash Majors. Uh, and Collision is for sure going to be, if not, you know, it already is one, but it's going to be one uh, continuing to be for the future. I mean, uh, if we can get people like, like you were saying, Quid, Light, Mars, Spargo, like all these guys showing up uh, year after year for uh, an, this, an event of this caliber, then, yeah, this is going to be um, maybe part of the Panda circuit or maybe part of the Smash World Tour circuit. Uh, you know, you never know. Uh, it, it could be uh, picked up as something like that to uh, uh, provide a lot of points for these players that are, you know, competing for these circuit rankings and huge prize pools that are hopefully coming well, Panda, from Nintendo. Panda's going to need some tournaments soon, all right? Yeah. They're they running out of tournaments, all right? You only got yeah. Genesis, the big house left, you know, and I guess Collision would be one. Not to harp on the past, but damn it, where is the circuit at, all right? I ain't going to keep asking. <laughs> I'm about to get on the TL and start talking crazy pretty soon. I want the circuit and I want it. Yeah, wow. that's that's the biggest thing is like the events, like since the Smash World Tour got announced, the events are pretty flushed out as far as what's attached to a world tour. And what's yeah. not, and you already know they're not going to like double up with having like the circuit attached to what's attached to World Tour. It just wouldn't make uh -huh. any sense. Um, mm -hmm. It also probably just wouldn't be like, you know, acceptable. So you got what? You got Genesis left, as you said, and there's not, you know, there's a month left to that. So, you know, is something going to get announced for that so that we know? Big House, as Rob mentioned, CEO. These are the only other th these are and these yeah. are the only things I can think of. Evo's not in the running for anything because there's no, no Smash. So, <laughs> Absolutely you know, what, not. What, what the hell really is left? So, I mean, obviously, we've kind of digressed here. We've kind of segued uh, from Collision into just talking about, you know, Nintendo and their sponsorship of Smash Esports in general. And that's a perfect time to mention Hungrybox's thoughts on the whole situation. HBox uh, had some words to say at the Streamer Awards where uh, Phil was at uh, getting his picture taken with Pokimane. Um, and yeah, HBox, as... As HBoxes want to do, uh, he had a few choice words um, towards Nintendo and their lack of support 
for the esport that he's uh, dedicated so much of his life to. Mm-hmm. Um, and, fair, you know, with good reason, obviously. Uh, but he left it on a positive note. You know, it wasn't all just bashing Nintendo. He just kind of called them out a little bit, but was uh, appreciative and happy that, you know, they have, uh, you know, gotten in uh, or they have announced the Panda circuit. They have, you know, talked about their partnership with Panda Global. But as we were saying, after that, there's just nothing, right? There's There hasn't been any information given out on what's going on with that world circuit or that North American circuit, rather. Uh, there hasn't been any information on what events might be part of it or if they're just going to create their own set of events, you know, and have those uh, compete with the other majors out there. Um, I have no idea. Uh, but what, Phil, what do you think of HBox and uh, his thoughts while accepting the award? I thought, it was, I thought it was good. I thought it was good. You know, he said that he, you know, he was willing to accept the task. Uh, should it fall on him? And he sure enough was. You know, we were always having a good time uh, there. Uh, the fact, I, I was actually surprised Mango didn't show up because he lives like, I think he's only like 20 minutes away and it was an open bar. I'm yes. like, what What else does it take to get you out of the house? Yeah, to clarify, HBox was just accepting an award on Mango's behalf. Yes. Uh, he didn't win. Correct, correct. But so he was, was using that platform to uh, talk about Mango and uh, Nintendo a little bit. Yeah, so that was, you know, that was cool. I mean, HBox, you know, anytime he's on camera, he likes to kind of make a, a show um or a spectacle and i do mean that in a positive way because the dude's entertaining he's a good guy he's my buddy and uh i I thought he was the most appropriate person to accept the award for mango who who chose not to be able to be in attendance so it was dope you know good for him you know he kept it classy you know it's all yeah it's an award show you know i'm saying i had to call anybody out here to just you know make a a couple statements that are reasonable and he did that so it was cool yeah this is probably the tamest i've seen hungry box in quite some time and you know some of the other uh times he's been on camera quite like this where he's either accepting an award or he's doing like a smash and splash like a pound speech you know they've been a little bit more wild but i think he knew to kind of dress it up here and i just think you know he's he's set with everybody's thinking um you know it's i think there's only other one other person who can accept the award like that on mango's behalf and it is hbox that and i would also try to speak on what melee and just the smash movie has been like for the last 20 years because they've been here since day one and so i think you know hungry box meant everything he said and i think he meant it with good intentions i just feel like you know i feel like how everybody else does what's going on um you know we made an announcement you know smash is supposed to be in better hands or different hands or some sort of hands are going to help us elevate um i think hungry box you know despite what people may think about him certainly represents a specific era in smash ultimate and he also represents kind of the smash community in, in its entirety and um we just got some questions that haven't really been answered yet and it's not uncommon for a community like ours to live in limbo what's happening when's it going to happen when are you going to announce it but i think for somebody like nintendo to you know pretty much give the keys to panda global you know or however which way that partnership is working i think it's cool panda global has really great people on the inside between jash and panda and coney and everybody but What's going on, y'all? We're waiting. Like, this is what we've needed. Smash World Tour is doing this thing, and I hate to keep making comparisons because people love doing that in communities like this, but we got one World Tour, but this is the one that is really supposed to cement us as an eSport. So kudos to Hungry Bucks. Got to ask the hard-hitting questions on platforms that need it. Absolutely. Um, I Yeah, it wasn't unexpected for him to, uh, you know, give a little call out, but like Phil was saying, it was definitely one of his more tamer, Mm-hmm. Uh, outburst, if you could even call it that. Um, it was just an acceptance speech. That's it. Yeah, it was just in his acceptance speech, exactly. Uh, <clears throat> I'm surprised nobody had a crab in crowd to uh, toss onto the stage. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry, crabs. Sorry, didn't mean crabs. to. Uh, didn't mean to infer anything. No, uh, I had it coming. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah. Hbox obviously has been, you know, vocal about Nintendo and their lack of support for Smash over the years, for years. He's been harping on this, obviously. Um, so, yeah, we just we, we got to see what's going to happen with this Panda Global Circuit. But you guys are saying, you know, there's just so few events for them to attach themselves to now. Um, with uh, our next topic, Smash World Tour and their reveal of their upcoming 2022 plans. Uh, last week, we talked about Smash World Tour and Evo having announcements of announcements 
Mm -hmm. Uh, So we got to finally see what those are. And in Smash World Tour's case, it's a huge return to form, obviously. So it's Smash World Tour in its initial inception, the way it was supposed to be, in-person tournaments, uh, tiers of events. So you can actually have your Smash Brothers tournament, uh, your local qualify for a Smash World Tour spot. Uh, you know, as like, uh, you know, silver or gold and then going up to platinum, obviously, um, with the first platinum event coming up being pound uh, very soon. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, it's going to be 35 plus events, 250,000 plus dollars in the prize pool, only going to grow from there. Uh, It's going to be just the same thing we saw last year, but bigger, better. I mean, yeah, guys, uh, what did you think of the uh, – we, we we had some predictions for what the announcement was going to be. I, I'd say we got a lot of them right, mm-hmm. um, you know. So uh, what, what do you think of Smash World Tour and uh, the upcoming return to form? Go ahead, Phil. I'll let you take this one because these are your boys. <laughs> uh, well, I'll be honest. This is not unexpected, right? I mean, you imagine they're going to do a world tour. Um, I'd say the last one was mildly successful and I say mildly successful because they weren't able to do these events in person right that was like a big knock it kind of I think it kind of contributed to some of the final competition we saw which I I do think Wi-Fi benefits more like campier spammier you know characters it is what it is take advantage of your situation and circumstances I think now with it being all in person to qualify well one I hope they do stand by that um you know and two I think it's going to I think it's going to be cool. I think it's going to give us a different look into um you know again talent around the world, possibilities and it's going to really give people more of an opportunity to get involved, win some money. And it's just cool, right? Like it's just like you think about it, the world tours is a, it's just a dope ass concept at the end of the day. You know, you want to be able uh to have smash like take a bigger and bigger stage. Obviously like we keep harping on it the Nintendo Panda Circuit looking forward to it. But we ain't got info about it, so we're not just going to sit around with our thumbs up our butts. We're going to, you know, keep keep things, got to keep moving, you know what I'm saying? That's just the reality of the Absolutely. world. Absolutely. Um, so I'm glad they announced this. I um, hope, it's, hope it's a successful outing for them. So many events have opted into it. We did mention a couple of the big ones that are not being Genesis, Big House, definitely things to kind of CEO, definitely events to keep an eye out for. But no, nah, this is, I mean, there's no negatives here. This is just, you know, more attention on Smash, more money. I would, you know, Metify, shouts to Metify, they're cool. Would like to see them continue to bring on some more titled, you know, partners. I feel like this kind of event should easily be able to draw, uh, easily be able to draw more, but um, more, you know, sponsorships and stuff like that. But maybe that's, you know, still to be determined and stuff like that since the circuit hasn't actually kicked off yet. But yeah, I know like they have an event coming up in in Qatar, you know, wherever Qatar, however you say that shit. Qatar. Yeah, that's gonna be dope. I've been to Dubai a couple of times. Those people over there are nothing but friendly. I'm referring to the Smash scene. I don't know any of the political stuff, so don't get on my ass about that. But the Smash scene over there has always been very welcoming. And I'm glad they get an event. It's dope. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I guess maybe they don't have the sponsorships they're looking for because remember that Twitter doc, Google doc, whatever that was, about a year or so ago, they mm-hmm. talked about how, like, Nintendo was kind of, you know, strong-arming some of these sponsors from coming into the community like Red Bull and stuff. But I do agree with you, Phil. Like, everything that Gamer and these guys do, they certainly deserve the tier one sponsor event um but it'd be you know be announced um but in, in terms of like the events one thing i've always loved about vg blue cam is that they've never switched up i for the longest always thought why do they stream these kind of like and i'm not trying to be disrespectful but why do they stream like these regionals like they give their stream keys to all these organizations and they're streaming like a 200 man something here and a 200 man something there and blah 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 but then after the smash world tour wrapped up last year i got to realize that yeah, it may not financially benefit them, but they're trying to put more eyes on other tournaments outside of, like, the big ones. And so I think going more international this year, really leaning into that in their video, I think really just kind of opened people's eyes up to how big Smash actually is. You know, we see it in other fighting games, especially like Tekken. Um, you know, they have a lot of strong players from the Middle East. And, of course, our wonderful friends across the ocean in Japan. I mean, very strong players. But over here... We don't really go over there. They more so over here for everything. It's different when we have to go over there now. Of course, before we just set players and like invitational for like a small bracket, but now we're actually, you know, getting on a flight and we're going to try to bring as many people over there as possible. So I think this is cool. Um, again, I can't help but to wonder 
you know, what's going to go on with that Panda circuit, seeing how, you know, VG has not only gotten like Gommel and Pound, you know, Pound in my book is one of the big three or four, depending on your, your opinion of Apex. But now they also have Apex as well, because in my world, it's always been Genesis, Pound, the big house Apex as like the elite four smash tournaments. But um, I'm excited to see how it all rolls out this year. I think the community, no matter which way this rolls, they've always been in great hands with Gamer and Apostle. And, uh, you know, if this is the future of Smash, then damn it, sign me up for a couple more years. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, this is going to be great for Smash. Uh, it's going to be great for the Smash World Tour, obviously. Uh, yeah, congrats to both of you and Gimmer and everybody involved in the Smash World Tour. All, you know, all the people working behind the scenes to um, get this uh, back to the original vision that, um, you know, Gimmer and everyone had for the Smash World Tour. Mm -hmm. um you know it was always meant to be this huge in person like i was saying world cup of smash um 100%. and uh it, it's it's great i i feel like this is the kind of thing that's gonna you know like help us find you know the next generation of talent for professional smash you know mm -hmm. the people the 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 youngsters like spargo just coming out of the woodwork um to show us uh, phenomenal talent that like yeah we we just have not even seen before um i think yeah there's still characters left to be revealed for viable smash i think there's obviously uh players still left to be discovered for um top tier smash as well so yeah and it, it, it's it's uh in part that uh events like smash world tour can uh you know take a little bit of uh, credit for uh helping um you know bring all of that forward yeah, Earth. I mean, just look at some of our best players right now. I mean, a good chunk of them in Ultimate are from other countries and stuff. So we're going to yeah. get more of that. I'm ready. It's actually, it's actually funny that they made the, um, that they made the, uh, you know, they announced this made Pound a platinum event because I can tell you right now, Pound being announced for the weekend after Genesis, I know people are going to skip that, but since the platinum event now, people are just going to grind through it mm -hmm. and go. So that was kind of like a power play. I feel like. Yeah, it kind of worked out in her favor. I know Pound has traditionally tried to do stuff in the springtime, which I think is cool because as many times as I've had to go to Laurel, the majority of them have been cold. And man, I'm not a fan of that shit. But springtime out there is actually a really beautiful sight to see. And um, I think, yeah, Phil, with both events being back-to-back -back weekends, it's just kind of like, goddamn, two of the most prestigious events in the community. We don't get any days off. But hell, I mean, it's a... This is a damn world tour. This is a circuit. You know what I'm saying? It ain't really supposed to be no days off. You got to, you know, get to it. So yeah. we'll see. I think, you know, them being back-to-back -back weekends is going to separate the strong from the weak. That I just want to go home and chill out. I want to, you know, be with my cats and stream. Like, okay, cool, bro. I ain't going to see you at the world tour then. Cool. Stay home. <laughs> it, it it gives, like, kind of a great kickoff to this uh, upcoming Smash World Tour circuit, basically, right? Like, you have these two big, high-profile events, um, both counting for uh, people who want to win the Smash World Tour in the long run. That's right. That's right. Good point. Yeah, so hopefully uh, we'll see some awesome stuff out of that. I, I know we're going to see some amazing Smash out of those events. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see what the uh, standings uh, will look like after those first two events. Uh, but also announced, of course, was Evo's announced or Evo's uh, a lineup for the upcoming in-person Evo tournament. Uh, it, it's kind of predictable. Like you know, they they uh, showed us nine games. Um, we knew that the main ones were going to be there: the Street Fighter, the Mortal Kombat, the Tekken. Um, I thought I, I was I figured King of Fighters as well. You know, would show up, and it it, it is. Uh, but a couple of you know a little bit of surprises: uh, Grand Blue versus um skull girls melty blood i mean it's cool to see those games uh still get some shine uh what do you think of the evo announcement and uh the games or what games are you most looking forward to seeing uh with smash not being there it's going to be tekken 7 and then i think dragon ball fighter shortly after but i will say that uh there is a beauty of watching a game's final year at evo you know just seeing everybody just current meta just dump it get it out you know what i'm saying stretch your stuff because there's a whole new game on the horizon and i'm you know, we've seen that with Street Fighter 4 into 5, and now I'm excited to see that for 5 into 6. Um, the community's been asking, and I think Evo's just going to deliver. Rick, of course, is calling the shots, and the presentation was definitely a Rick presentation. You can tell that he is definitely the one calling the shots. Very 
stylistically, aesthetically put together with Tasty Steve and Sage Jam, two of the most prolific voices in fighting games right now, kind of leading the charge on that. So um, really excited. Also to see, obviously, King of Fighters get some limelight. Um, I think in the past, they've always been a Saturday spot. So I think they got a, a Sunday block this year. But also the anime fighters, too. I will say this. I'm not as well versed in the anime fighters as I probably would like to be. Dragon Ball fighters, I, I know it's like probably the most training wheels of all of them. But I would have liked to see Eunice um, get that spot at Evo in person. I think we did a Eunice online a couple years ago, like when the pandemic first started, but we didn't do one in person. I'm a firm believer that that game is one of the best games to, if not play, at least to watch. But outside of that, really excited to see them all. And of course, my question is always, when's Marvel? What are we going to do with Marvel versus Capcom? It's not happening. You'll never get it. I know. No, I mean, I've only ever, like, cared about Evo for Smash as far as, like, attendance-wise. I've watched Evo a bunch of times. So it's kind of weird to me. Um, Depending on what homies go, I'll still attend. Just, you know, I think it'll be a content goldmine just for Vegas itself. And, uh, you know, look at it like a little bit of a vacation or whatever. It's an hour flight, if that, from where I live now. So it's not like it's a big commitment. Uh, so we'll see. I mean, I'll likely just and end up going just to hang out with people, meet people, get content. Um, I have no interest in commentating anything. And people ask me all the time, like, well, how come you don't commentate more games? Like, I like playing games, but, like, I'm more interested in, in hosting and interviewing and stuff like that than just casting. I've done that forever with Smash. That's why I like to do other shit. That's why I like getting into Fortnite, because I can do, like, a host role and shit like that. So that's where I am on that. But I'm glad Evo looks like it's still going to be thriving. I mean, I know Pokey owns some rights to that now, so, of course, I will support in any way possible. So. Oh, my Lord. Let's go, Evo! Um. Hey. With uh, this lineup, you know, pretty much set and just obviously these heavy hitters like Street Fighter, Guilty Gear, Mortal Kombat and Tekken um, being the, the you know, the the uh, headliners um, with removal of Smash and no other platform fighter on the list. Uh, and I ask this just because like Pyro's saying that Nickelodeon got robbed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Do you think there's room for platform fighting in Evo going forward, or is Evo going to be the Super Bowl of the more traditional fighting games, your 2D and 3D fighters uh, going forward? Smash I kept the was... lights on, hold on, Rob. Smash kept the lights on for Evo for years. <laughs> Look at them attendance numbers and the disrespect that big traffic cone Mr. Wizard was giving people. Evo should appreciate revere and miss smash because the moment nintendo gives the green light you know that shit is back in their frame one personally not sure it's gonna happen i'm gonna keep it real i'm not sure it's gonna happen but at the very least i do think there's room for a platform fighter and if i had to hedge my bet i'd say next year you're gonna see wb as one of their main headliners oh wow yeah i think to maybe wait a year would be a little bit better it would just be a pr nightmare for i don't care how strong of a platform fighter organization you are whether it be brawl hall or rivals nick whatever that would just be a PR nightmare for yourself. Um, and again, because like Phil said, because of just the history and the lineage that Smash has at Evo and CEO and a lot of other, you know, just fighting games, period. You know, the fighting game community, you know, traditional fighting game community, they feel a type of way about Smash and that's perfectly fine. There's a lot of, you know, reasons to feel the way they probably do, but they probably don't know on the background of things. So we were definitely keeping the lights on in there because Smashers will show up to play Smash any goddamn where. But I would like maybe... And I could, this just might be me and just in my brain, whatever. I like to see a platform fighter Evo. Like, just get all the platform fires together and let them do their thing. I mean, I, I the very nature of that, of course, would separate, obviously, platform fighters from traditional fighters, which will, of course, further the conversation of, is this FGC? Is it not? But yeah. I think there's enough between Smash Melee, is Super Valhalla, Nick. Like, come on. WB? Like, come on. I, I'd go yeah. to a platform fighter Evo. Plevo. I go, uh, call it Plevo. Plevo. I, I don't like to interrupt, but uh, do you think Super Smash Con is kind of the closest thing we would get to a platform fighter um, Evo? Uh, just because they have a lot of side games um, at Smash Con. You know, they play all of the Smash Brothers. You know, they, they celebrate every single entry of the of the game. Smash Con could be that. I, and it goes to show after this last fall fest edition with uh i think nickelodeon all-stars brawl's first offline event was that tournament if i'm not mistaken yeah. um 
you know, the possibility is there. I do think that SmashCon is a celebration of just platform fighters in general. However, um, I've seen the panels for like Smash Flash, and then of course I see the games that get the limelight. Um, I've commentated at least two or three of those. I'll put it this way: I don't see any of the other platform fighters on the commentary schedule for a reason. But I do think that uh, there is a spot for it. If I'm not mistaken, a few years back. The game that is now Rush Down Revolt, back when it was Icons, I actually had a mm-hmm. jump off thing there. And I remember standing around with some of the guys and just playing it for a few hours. So it is possible. But I mean, at this point, SmashCon is already a celebration of everything that is Smash Bros. related in the genre of platform fighting. But I would just like to see something that's a, a little bit more tournament, you know, oriented, a little bit more in that competitive mindset. Okay. And just, you know, do a platform fighter Evo. I I'd show up for that, you know, between Smash and WB, I'm sold. I mean, there's definitely room for that to happen and obviously you would have people entering into like every game, right? Like you'd ha- you'd get people who just entered every every tournament uh at at something like that because they would just play all of them. Oh yeah, um, just spam it. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Uh which is I guess a little harder to do in the more traditional, I mean, it, you know, you obviously have people who enter into Street Fighter, who also enter into Guilty Gear, who also enter into Mortal Kombat, but True. you don't usually see people who enter into all nine games at right. an Evo. Yeah, they'll um, try to stop you hardcore from that. Yeah, well, really? Yeah, yeah, they'll try to stop you. There's a uh, Justin Wong, you know, and even the Smash. Yeah, Justin Wong, he used to, he, like, he played everything. Yeah, and like Mewtwo King and Smash, like he came to Nebraska, you know, years and years ago, and he tried to do doubles and singles and Smash 4, Melee, and Project M, and then he would try to do like the brawl side bracket. And I'm like, uh-huh. dude, you are holding up bracket. You cannot <laughs> do every damn thing. I mean, you physically can, but you can't yeah, do yeah. that shit here. Gotcha, yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's just, it, it would be interesting to see a platform fighting Evo. Uh, I think Phil hit the nail on the head, though. I think if we are to see any one of them show up, it would be the WB one just because of the oh, ties yeah. with Mortal Kombat. Um, mm-hmm. and the the publisher you know they have strong ties with evo a lot of money going in already um so yeah that would probably be the most likely hopefully that game's good we'll we'll, we'll have to see uh but yeah those were the announcements uh that were announced finally we we heard the news of them announcing them then we got to see the announcements and now we have reported on the announcements so take that do what we will with it let's move on we got to talk about some halo again though halo is the game we talk about a lot on this show apparently uh just always in the esports news somehow um this time is maybe a fix uh last time we talked about halo it was kind of bad news today is more hopeful news uh a new halo infinite patch is available right now go and get it for your computer um it's uh a hot fix for some crashing that has been uh, found in the PC version, as well as uh, adding some other stuff to it. Um, allows you to start land services from the in-game menu. Um, it's not a huge patch, uh, clocking in around 600 megabytes. Jeez, I remember when a 600 megabyte patch would have been considered a huge, like that would be the whole, like that's the whole game. Because yeah, it came on a CD, it came on a CD. That's that's a whole other CD. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, not anymore. 600 megabytes is nothing now. Uh, yeah, so hopefully this will uh, provide a little st- more stability for people who have been looking to play on PC, people who have been looking to compete, and uh, competing is going to happen. Um, this comes just in time for Halo Championship Series Kansas City. Uh, that's happening very soon. Uh, what do you know about Kansas City Halo? How they how they play in how they, how they how do they play Halo in Kansas City? Yo, so here's actually the funny part about KC. So they do it different down there. Man, they moved different in KC and in Missouri. So what's funny is a couple, more than a couple years ago, but like in 2015 or 16, Phil and I did a UGC Smash Open. And that was my first like introduction to like what esports actually looks like and like mm-hmm. what it looks like when we as a grassroots community kind of come over and invade. And I'm like, oh, these Halo and CSGO guys, like this is some good shit down here. You know, I didn't get paid at the time, but from what I was told, the pay was actually pretty good and the accommodations were sick. We're just stuck in St. Louis in an area that nobody really cares about. But I was like, okay, I think the Halo guys, I think this is their stomping grounds. And then I met a guy out there. His name is uh, his name is Legion, big YouTuber, wonderful guy. I think him and his, I believe they're still together. Him and his last girlfriend, they were in charge of a gaming cafe called Gamecast. Like they were just doing it big in that part of the country. Mm-hmm. But 
it gives me high hopes, you know, especially after our conversation last week, you know, I don't want to dunk on Halo, even though yeah. I don't have like the most extensive history with it. I played it, you know, when I was younger a lot, I haven't been playing it as of late. I don't want to dunk on it because it still means a lot to the culture, but I think good news is a sign of better things to come. But what I guess maybe makes me scratch my head a little bit is like, you know, when we talk about cell phones, you're like, man, why are these little ass patches here and there and blah, blah, blah. Just drop the whole damn thing and fix the son of a bitch. I'm looking at Halo like, you know, small tweaks here and there, adding new modes. There he is. I had to make sure I summon him. I'm like, yo, why are we not just going to drop it all when we need it? What's up with that? Halo's boring. Welcome. <laughs> well, welcome, welcome to the show you created. Hey, uh, about this patch, it sucks. It doesn't address like the core problem with the game. Uh, what is that? The tick rate, the hit detection okay. is piss poor, especially in the new mode that they launched last week, which is mm -hmm. uh, Tactical Slayer, uh -huh. which is like, you know, pistols, battle rifle, mangler. Yep. yep, yep. You know, things where if you shoot someone in the head, they should fucking die. And they don't right now. Those would be. My I just intentions. went through that entire patch note you guys posted in the uh, the Google Doc. Mm -hmm. Not one mention of it. Uh, Chris, you've been suffering through Halo Thursdays with me. You literally rage quit last Thursday because of how bad it was, right? Uh, Chris, rage, rage quit, quit? because one of our asshole teammates kept driving me into a pit over and over. Okay, that so, but it, you've you've definitely railed against the hit detection in this game since launch. I mean, right? it's a Halo game. I wasn't going to like it no matter what, but uh, you know, <laughs> I did see that they fixed the all the different animations of the game at random arbitrary frame rates, and now I'm supposing that they all work at a regular frame rate. Which I, I'm I, odd that I can't believe they were reloading at 14 hertz and then people were being shot at 61 hertz and all this other weird shit. Like, it makes yeah. no sense. That's a uh, that's part of the problem. But yeah, this uh, this take from EE that it's boring. I I guess. Uh, what, new what Halo's whack. You like new Halo's whack. Classic Halo two and three is dope. That's it. This is oh, classic okay. Halo two and three with a coat of paint. They didn't yeah. change anything. This actually feels a lot like Halo 2 and 3, so I don't really well, get that. Well, then I don't know what the hell happened. It's Terrible. still a pretty popular game. Uh, yeah, listen. It is. I, I guess my biggest concern is, you know, there are things that they are changing and, you know, tweaking as they go. But there are some, there's a long laundry list, you know, or maybe not a long one, but there's a laundry list of some very key areas that need change. And I'm just like, why not just attack that head on? I mean, this is good news that they are listening, that they're changing certain things. But I'm like, why not just change the things that people well, need? I feel like if they if they wait to bring out this patch that, you know, fixes the game, per right. se, uh, it, it would just take too long, you know, and interest in the game would die off by that Also, time. the director it, of the game went out for cigarettes and never came back. Never came interest back. in the game <laughs> is dying. That. Like, yes. interest in the game is dying. You can so, look at the Steam charts. It's falling off a cliff on yeah. Steam. Uh, I can tell you just from playing the game, I'm running into the same people in matches back-to-back, -back, which okay. is kind of the sign of yeah. less people on the platform. Uh, yeah, I think that they're, they've are they done a terrible job at maintaining that lead that they got when they launched multiplayer in November. Mm -hmm. uh, none of these fixes are... like I'm going to post these patch notes to my Discord where all we do is play Halo, and none of these things are going to matter to any of the players in that Discord. And that's what's not great about this. Mm -hmm. And it, it does seem like every time that they have an opportunity to improve the game, they figure out a way to make it about some sort of cosmetic bundle too, because you right. see Optic Gaming has a bundle in this one. It's like they spent way more time on that crap than they did actually fixing the game. Hey, yeah. they adjusted uh, sound effects for footsteps are now as loud when you get killed as they were before you didn't get killed. Instead of being louder after you're dead, <laughs> yeah, there's like uh, stuff like that that's going on in this game. Yeah. It didn't ship with co-op. They delayed co-op. Like, I don't know. Well, I, obviously they fit what they can in these kinds of patches, right? They what they is just bullshit. This is a two trillion dollar company. Like, what? Is, where is the bottleneck here? If this yeah, giant ass true. company can't fix their fucking game and they own Azure, like, what the fuck's their problem? Like, just let us know what the bottleneck is. Then we'll maybe be more understanding. But when you're like the second largest company in the world and you tout xCloud and all your services and stuff, like your king shit, and then your multiplayer online game, your flagship one, runs like shit, something needs to give here. Yeah. And, it, and right now it's the player base leaving. Yeah. And that, I mean, that was my biggest concern too. Because, you know, when you see a patch, especially in a game that's, you know, 
they're patching it, but you know, there's some certain things that we need. It kind of puts you at a fork in the road with the game. It's like, okay, the developers still care because they're like changing and tweaking small minuscule things. But then it's like, well, what's the point of tweaking and patching shit if you're not going to patch the shit that's needed? And that's what kind of throws me off about Halo because it is a $2 trillion company. But it's like, who and what are they listening to? Like, is this more of like a back-end financial thing that they're more worried about as, as opposed to the game's competitive viability? Like, what's happening? I think they already invested a lot of money in the game, Rod. Okay. I think they did. Uh, oh, it was yeah, development. development. They had to basically time. scrap it, restart it. Like, right. this is, they're underwater on this game. No question. Yeah. Especially because they're giving it away for free in the multiplayer format. And it's True. a Game Pass game, right? So you don't necessarily make 60 bucks when someone downloads your game off of Game Pass, you know? So I do think they're taking an L here financially. And maybe they don't want to throw bad money or good money after bad or bad money. I don't know what the hell the saying is. I did see uh, one thing that gives me some hope, Chris. They added a new telemetry to help our developers gather more information on shot registration issues. So and they link they, back to the old blog they wrote where they're just like, maybe you guys should jiggle the cable. So like they they at least gave us better analytics for how shitty the bullet they, tracking is. Well, the <laughs> analytics are for them, not us. On it. They get it to themselves. They, yes. they have. They're doing. It's like a. It's like when the president announces that they're going to do a study on something. It means exactly. they're doing nothing. They yeah. know about the issue. They're aware of the issue. They're going to keep an eye on it. That's like when you do something bad online, and it's like, oh, well, I'm, we're open to dialogue. You know, we're still no. learning. And Pyro, I know they're not putting two trillion in there. They don't have two trillion in the bank. I'm saying they're valued at that. Not to mention, like they are like the one of the third biggest cloud companies on earth. That you would think that this flagship <laughs> online game that they spent half a billion on or something, they would actually want to be good. But I don't know. Well, yeah, obviously, it, most of the money was wasted in the development that just got scrapped after years, which was probably hundreds of millions of dollars just down the drain. It just feels, and, and we said this last week, it feels like just scope limitations yeah. everywhere. Yeah. This game is just scope limitation in the game. And right. it comes through in the single player design, which to E's point, I'll agree with you. It's kind of boring. Uh, but the multiplayer isn't. Like, there is, like, an actual fun game yeah. somewhere in here. And high-level Halo play is still fun to watch. Uh, HCS is, yeah. is actually one of my favorite FPS esports out there right well, now. Well, speaking of HCS, uh, that was the second part of this news story. And, um, yeah, HCS Kansas City coming up soon. I mean, $250,000 prize pool for this one event is big money. I mean, obviously... That's like Smash World Tour's entire prize pool. Yeah. You gotta break balls. What are you, what are you yeah. saying? Like, at least they're putting money. Like, at least, like, that's my point, though, Rod. Like, if yeah, you're gonna yeah, put yeah. a quarter million dollars for one event, like, yeah. make it run better. Yeah, because like your players are gonna hate it too. Like, I, I love that the HCS players have like literally stood up and said, "Remove this from the playlist, or we're just not gonna play anymore." Like they did that with Behemoth because that map sucks that much. Like, it's just it's funny to see. The actual player platform to play on in HCS. Oh, it's got to be PC. Okay. Yeah. Well, I guess that's the weird thing about these companies too is that like when there's a complaint, instead of actually listening, I mean, are they, they hear, maybe they are listening. So let me rephrase that: they are listening, but instead of listening and addressing it, they just throw more money at the issue. And I'm like, dude, you cannot put a fire out from inside of the house. You have to come beside your bullshit and be like, hey, look, this is what we're doing wrong, and if we want to keep this game at a level that it needs to be played because this ain't like 2007 anymore like you know this is these are people's livelihoods on the line and if enough players say i'm not doing this or i'm not playing i'm backing out whatever the case is that only just hurts the the game's brand i mean competitively and casually because you know that that area between those two concepts casual and competitive play is a very thin line but if you fucking ruin both sides you don't have anything yeah no i i agree and you're Watching competitive play is what drives the meta for casuals too, right? So like, yeah, absolutely, yeah. You sit there and you watch. Uh, like, I watch some HCS and I'm like, huh? I guess the shotgun isn't trash, you know? Like, because the meta is all about the shotgun in, in a lot of those games. Uh, so yeah, like I, I agree with you there, but it's just weird to see Microsoft investing in this game, but at the same time, like not. It's um, just like it's like do one or the other. Try not like it's like they're trying to pull one over on us and. We've seen too many shitty halos to be like this one's yeah. good. Back you to know? shitty halos. Yeah. I mean, we we've 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 been through way too much of this with yeah. 343, especially with the Master Chief collection. That mm -hmm. like I 
I can tell you, my group of friends have stopped playing Halo as much as we were because it was in such a bad state in the last week. Like, really bad. Wow. And then they, they like, they add this mode that's all about precision. And then you literally will shoot someone in the head three times, and it takes three headshots to get a kill, where it should be one. So I just, I think it's, uh, it, it's a huge problem for that, for that game going forward. But it's, it's like the best thing that they have going on that system right now too. So I, I, I don't even know. It's yeah, weird. the system is, uh, how's it? What's the saying go? Twenty pounds of shit in a ten pound sack or some shit. You know, there's just not a lot going on with it, and I. Well, one part of me wants to say, man, it sucks that Halo's kind of, like, carrying the system, but I can't think of another game culturally that should be doing it. But then, like, here they are in a position to really drive things into New Horizons, and they're just kind of fumbling the bag. It just... I don't know, man. I... My heart goes out to the people who are invested into Halo, like, this type of way, because you guys deserve better. Like you said, the game competitively isn't terrible. Like, it's still a good multiplayer, but you know it could be more. Yeah, and... Like they're uh, <laughs> just the things that they act like they're adding like our our features are just things that were standard in Halo Three. Uh, so I I don't understand how this franchise has fallen so far from where it was. Uh, and yeah, if this is your like, let's just say Nintendo was pulling this with some game. Like if they had a similar poor quality release of a franchise of this tier. Those fans would tear them to shreds. And I think that a lot of Xbox fans were just like, okay, we'll take it, because it's still the best Halo we've had in 10 years. That's the problem. It's like an abusive relationship where this is okay relative to Halo 4 or 5. And I think that's... Yeah, go ahead, Chris. Just the Steam version, Steam version only of Forza Horizon 5 has got more concurrent peaks than Halo Infinite. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have the advantage of being free. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah, uh, they've actually patched all the issues, a lot of the issues. In the big one was patched uh, yeah, back in the beginning of the summer. Mm-hmm. Not a perfect before, game, but... Yeah, before we move on, I just wanted to ask real quick, um, do you think HCS is going to become the next Overwatch League or Call of Duty League uh, a year from now? Or do you think the free-to-play will still keep it going? I don't know what you mean by next Overwatch League, because if you're viewing it from the developer's standpoint or the publisher's standpoint, Overwatch League was a huge success. It they was. They selling franchises for $50 million a pop. No for... way would this happen in HCS. <laughs> nobody be paying $50 million for HCS. Team. No. You gotta be out of your mind. So, no way. No way would it be as successful as COD, Pro League, or Overwatch League. Now, I'm not saying that present Overwatch League is successful, but... If you're if you're robbing a bank, right? It looks like EE and I are planning to rob a bank to fund Rodfest yeah. later. Thank you. Uh, but if you if you're planning on robbing a bank, go Bobby Kotick style as opposed to to Phil Spencer style. Because Overwatch League was highway robbery for any of those teams that bought in. That none of them are ever going to make that money back. Yeah. If you actually put together an HCS team, you could probably make some money this year. You know, because quarter million dollars happening at an event. I know the one in Raleigh was a similar prize pool. Mm-hmm. I think there's some teams out there that are scrappy enough, put together with the right kind of, yeah. You know, like if if there was like a moist uh, esports version of a Halo team, I could see them making some money this year. Uh, but no, it's not. I don't think it, HCS will ever be anywhere near that. Like Overwatch League was televised. Uh, I don't think we're gonna see HCS on TV. Uh, so no, I, I don't think we're anywhere near that. Yeah, I don't I hate Overwatch League. I can't stand that shit. <laughs> I, I don't know if it could reach that point. And uh, like you're saying, with the way that Microsoft is handling the game, um, I don't know how much. Uh, they, uh, do you think this would be the, like they basically have this season of HCS to get it right? Yeah, I mean, right. Like they like after this season is over, if nobody's playing the game, there's not going to be any interest in a second one. Look, man. There's a Quake Pro League still happening for Quake Champions. Yeah, you think you think so it'll be forever? It's, it's money, man. If there's money for a there's prize money. pool, a team will materialize or players will get together. There, I don't think the death of Halo esports has been declared a lot of times. It's, it's true that never yeah. died because Halo is fun to watch. It just is, especially high level Halo play. So I, I just I don't think it's like a binary thing where. 
either HCS is going to thrive or HCS is going to die. Yeah. Once again, going back to Microsoft being the second largest company on earth, they don't mind throwing money at this. So I think that when you have prize pools of this size, the esports not going to die. Some of the more talented players may leave for other esports like Valorant or mm-hmm. I don't know, like any other FPS. But <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think the problem is, and this is true of anyone who's like high level Halo player. Halo is super different when compared to most other FPS games. You know, the pace of play, rate of fire, yeah. uh, the the fact that you can get a reversal kill so easily in the game. Uh-huh. None of that is like COD or Quake or Unreal or a lot of, or hell, Fortnite. So like, I think it's different in that sense. It's a different skill set. So you're not going to see, you remember when Valorant was really announced, a bunch of CSGO players jumped over there, a bunch of Overwatch yeah. League players jumped over there. There were similarities. I don't think that's necessarily the case with Halo. So it's like, it's like being really good at Melee. You're really good at Melee. You, just, you should keep playing Melee. And I mm-hmm. think if you're really good at Halo, you should keep playing Halo. So that's going to, like, some of those players probably feel kind of trapped right now. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's actually really well put um, because uh, I definitely, yeah, I wasn't looking at it that way. Uh, I I would like to see HCS, you know, thrive more. I just want to see the game itself um, get into, like you said, just get into a workable state where you, you're not wondering why someone didn't die after you shot them in the head three times. Like, yeah, that's just it's not an acceptable way yeah. to have your to to have a a, a a competitive multiplayer game. You can running. go to the Halo Reddits and stuff like whatever the Halo Infinite subreddits, but every day there's a huge thread about just clips of horrible hit detection. Yeah, and it's really frustrating. Like it, I I just when you have a, a I think last week kind of highlighted it. You have a game mode that's all about precision and the game itself can't handle that level of precision, that's a problem. You might yeah, want to so just one. might want to go back to Fiesta again instead of giving us Tactical Slayer. And then we mentioned it last week, but the, the lead multiplayer dev bailed yeah. on Infinite. So, so this is, this is a, it's in a very bad place right now. Fix your shit, Microsoft. Fix your they shit. Won't. They, they won't. They won't. All right, let's move on. Uh, if you like this hard-hitting Halo bashing, I know, it's, it's not Halo bashing. We're just... Really Look, talking about I like the truth. Halo. I'm probably going to play it tonight, but yeah, you, you, I, I, I can also say that the game is broken absolutely. and it, it needs to be fixed. It's just the most fun I've had playing a Halo game since three. And that's why everybody loves it. Uh, yeah, if you love this stuff, please make sure you're followed to the channel. Make sure you hit the follow button for Shack News. Make sure you hit the little heart icon, hit the little uh, bell icon, or whatever the notification icon is. And that way you'll be notified every single time when we go live. We have all kinds of great shows going throughout the week, new shows starting up soon, uh, tons of awesome content. So you won't want to miss that. If you're followed here, if you're notified, you uh, will be able to catch it all. And if you uh, want to subscribe and help us out to help keep this. Uh, awesome content going we would very much appreciate that too thank you so much to everyone who subscribed to the channel everyone who's doing it for shack news if you have an amazon prime account you can just link that to your twitch account and get a prime gaming sub get those bezos bucks flowing those are free they give you a free sub every single month to use at your leisure give it to whatever twitch channel you like why don't you give them our way we like them very much um If you can't watch it live, though, if you can't uh, catch everything here on the Twitch channel, you can always go over to YouTube and check out our two spots, our two channels for videos over there. Shack News Games, our main account, and Gamer Hub videos. Uh, Shack News Games, you'll find all of the best unboxings, reviews, previews, uh, features from our main website um, in video form, VODs from our Twitch uh, channel as well. But over on Gamer Hub videos, you'll find some really in-depth developers uh, and celebrity interviews, uh, tech and toy breakdowns, all kinds of great stuff over there as well. I mean, the between the two of them, we have thousands of hours of exclusive content that you're just not going to find anywhere else. Um, really great stuff. Make sure you're subscribed to both of those channels, Shack News Games and Gamer Hub videos. And make sure you're talking about them on your social media platforms like Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. If you see a new video you like, hit that thumbs up on it and then maybe talk about it over on Twitter and share it with your friends and tell them you saw an awesome 
uh, new video over on Shack News Games. We greatly appreciate that kind of stuff. Or you could just give us a quote, tweet, a follow, a retweet, a, any of those things that you do over on that Twitter hellscape, on that Twitter hell site. Uh, we are uh, over there at Shack News on Twitter and um, at Shack News on Facebook, Shack News Games on Instagram. You can... Uh, Give a shout out to Denny Von Doom. He's actually been feeling a little under the weather, so make sure you go give him a nice message. Uh, he's DVD. our community manager, keeping it down. That's right, DVD. Um, so yeah, make sure you give him a nice uh, follow, a heart, a retweet, all that good stuff over on Twitter. And if you want to see a new social media platform, something that's brand new, never been done before, make sure you check out Shack Pets, our platform. It's our ultimate battle for cuteness. It's our way of just spreading some cheer around the world. It's a unique social media platform for you to upload pictures of your pets or to just look at pictures of pets. You don't have to upload anything. It's completely free. It's on iOS and Android over at the App Store, over on the Google Play Store. You don't have to spend anything on it. And like I said, you can browse through the pet feed. You can check out all the cute pets that people have uploaded. You can swipe left or right in pet battles, decide who is the cutest pet. Or you can upload pictures of your pets, challenge other people's pet, other people's pictures, and decide which is the ultimate uh, battle or which is the ultimate cutest pet. Um, Lola's winning a lot of them. Uh, a lot of Shaq pets are winning a lot of the uh i mean like shack staffer pets when a lot of the uh challenges because they're just the cutest if, if you feel like your pets are cuter go ahead give them a challenge see if you can top them i mean the app was born out of just greg burke I had a video and i arguing over whose pet was cuter yes uh, and yeah In so c versus lola battle yeah we had an election at e3 yeah. 2018 lola won yeah lola has won 7966 <laughs> times on shack pets so far i'm not out there challenging people it's just that, no those know, are just yeah she's, challenges she gets challenged. when you challenge lola you usually lose so maybe don't challenge lola as much if you come at the uh, queen you become correct yeah so you know uh yeah we actually hit a major milestone today at shack pets we're not going to announce it yet we're gonna okay work on it. we got a trailer that we're going to work on uh i'm actually going to go talk to greg about that right now uh nice. so yeah. it's trailer uh, yeah Definitely, definitely a download if you haven't, uh, and if you are using it, uh, thank you. Uh, we appreciate everyone who's contributed to it, even if you're just uh, interacting with us on Instagram or, or Twitter. Uh, yeah, we've been a little bit more active on those platforms with sharing what's going on on our platform. Uh, but yeah, Shack Pets got a big update coming this month, and uh, yeah, it's looking good. We, like I said, awesome. hit, a, hit a major milestone. So thanks to everyone who has uploaded an image uh, since we launched in November. Well, congratulations to Shack Pets. Congratulations to everybody involved. Uh, congratulations to everybody who's been uploading their pictures and um, making challenges and just really just using the app in general. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. yeah, been uh, provided a ton of great feedback for the devs. Um, and it just helps make the app even better. Yep. We, uh, we saw a huge... You know, ever since Putin decided to invade uh, Ukraine, we've seen quite an uptick in people using Shack Pets. And I think it's mainly just because people want a break uh, from the doom scrolling. And, you know, it's almost hard to avoid right now. I'm not saying you shouldn't pay attention to the news of current events, but if you want a break, Shack Pets is pretty sweet for that. There's no comment section. It's just, there's no politics. It's just pets. Black Pets, Rod? Yeah, I forgot to tell you guys, I'm doing a competitor app. Um, Good luck. Pets. And we black pets only, 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 only black animals so yeah. like don't black tell twitch cats, about it you mean like under the like fur that. or does black fur count don't don't let twitch find out rod just black fur just black fur. Oh, okay so it can be a different color underneath the black fur yep just black fur. don't yeah. paint any animals chris don't do it we've talked about i'm this. not allowed to be near the animals that live here anyway that's fine. All right. Well, anyways, go over to Shack Pets on the iOS App Store and the Google Play Store. Make sure you check it out. Uh, thank you, Asif, for sharing. Um, I'm out of here. Uh, yeah. Uh, you guys have a good rest of your show. Appreciate your Halo insight. Yeah, and, I figured uh, if, I hear, if I hear you guys talking about Halo, I'll just swoop in because I actually played the game quite a bit. 
Please don't. Please don't talk about Halo okay. unless you have to. Okay. <laughs> well, if it's they... still better than talking about Owl. That's true. If if uh, they don't fix the game, then we probably won't have to touch on it again. But if they do fix the game, we'll obviously be talking about it. Uh, but let's move on. See you later, Asif. Thank you again. Appreciate the uh, insight. Let's go to our next story, though. We just yes. got a couple left. Uh, we got to talk about another esports org partnering with cryptocurrency. Uh, the crypto boom is still in its infancy. It's still an uh, undiscovered you know, country out there, still a brand new uh, metaverse of um, opportunities, I guess. I sound like a freaking buzzword. Like I sound like uh matt damon or some shit mm. anyways yeah misfits have become the next major esports or to partner with uh a crypto company tezos a self-upgrade and energy efficient uh blockchain uh is supposedly um energy efficient and self-upgradable we'll see we'll see i don't know i don't know they all know. got it they all got it yeah We'll see. But uh, this is uh, coming in time for Misfit, for Misfits to launch their own new gaming. Now, I had to leave the typo in there because it was too good. Uh, their yeah. own gaming blockchain, uh, oh, as typed in by Rodney Connors Jr. Damn, black. <laughs> I, black on the brain. What am I, black? I mean, I, I just you, you, you have you have your competitor, your, your, your Shaq Pets competitor, Black Pets. I figure you could start your own blockchain competitor in blockchain. Well, um, you know what? Let's do it, Phil. EE exactly. coin on the blockchain. What's up? Get it all in time for Rumble Fest. Let's get it. 2K22. That's right. I'm Take it over. Jeff Bezos, Pesos. Come talk to us, man. So, yes, Blockborn is going to be uh, Misfit Gaming's blockchain gaming arm. Uh, I just, I don't know. I, I, it, it's like they're, they're going to have tournaments sponsored with this coin and like. They they promise that their tournaments will be carbon neutral, so each tournament will remove more carbon from the atmosphere than it produces, and things like that. I mean, I wasn't even really worried about the carbon footprint of esports tournaments until now. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't realize that was a, a a thing. I figure the multinational global corporations are doing way more to hurt the atmosphere than a potential esports tournament. Um, but you know, whatever, uh, if, if that's a thing we're concerned about, then I guess that's a thing we're concerned about. And, uh, you know, good on misfits for trying to make their tournaments carbon neutral. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think about this? I, I, it's just, it's an, to me, it's just all buzzwords. It's all yeah. kind of nonsense. Um, you, you know, the official blockchain partner, like I need guys, someone to explain to me, me like I'm me what a blockchain partner does, what Blockborn yeah. does, and why this is beneficial to me or anyone. Well, I'm still learning about it myself. But I will say this. You know, when I did look this company up, they're supposed to be, like, you know, one of, like, two or three of, like, the best blockchain organizations out there. And I do <laughs> think that this is kind of strange for Misfits to kind of... It almost feels like they had this one just in the back burner for a while, and then they were like, okay, everybody else has announced theirs we'll step on up and do ours. And, um, you know, I'm more in the camp of like, hey, if this helps further what you're doing as a company, as an organization, sure, I'm about it. Me personally, I'm still learning a lot about the metaverse myself. I've been working with a, a separate company here that I'm going to announce in a couple of days about some of the plans we have. And I definitely had a fixated opinion on it. But when they broke down kind of the importance, I'm saying that very, you know, whatever, because it's subjective, but the future of what this is supposed to be, I almost found myself having a bit of a boomer moment. Because remember, all the boomers were like, the internet is a fad. You motherfuckers are going to be back in the library in a couple of weeks reading books again, all right? Wikipedia can kiss Libraries didn't go anywhere, by the way. And, it, and they didn't go anywhere. And the internet stayed. And I was like, I hope I'm not being that. Let me, if nothing else, look into the world of crypto, Bitcoin, metaverse, whatever, and just see what's up with it. And I think for something like this, if this company lives up to the stuff that they pitched, you know, in this Misfits um, article... We could actually be in good hands. Who knows? Biodegradable, self-upgradable, you know, carbon footprint, you know, all that type of stuff. They are buzzwords, but if they actually hold themselves accountable and do it, I think they'll set the template for more to come. Yeah. <laughs> this is 
Misfits. I, I haven't heard shit about Misfits in years. So, I mean, if their if their idea was to get on the radar, hey, that's cool. You know, okay, Misfits still a thing, doing their thing. Maybe I'm just not familiar with the games. They're in. you know that's not true. They did announce like a, I think all girl Valorant team, which I thought was pretty sick. But aside from that, yeah, I haven't really heard too much from Misfits. Um, I don't I haven't seen this tweet or anything. But if it's on Twitter, I'm sure they're getting dragged in the quote retweets as per usual. Mm-hmm. So. You know, hey, if you're getting paid, whatever. At the end of the day, people are just going to be resistant to anything that has crypto or blockchain or whatever, you know, word you want to put in there. So just get your money and just turn off notifications. Good for them. Uh, that's the question and, I have is I'm not 100% sure who is getting the money or where the money's coming from. That's I feel the part like, that I don't understand. I feel like Misfits is paying Tezos for this partnership, uh, just as Phil right. was saying, to get their name back in the news. Yeah, uh, like I, mean, I don't, I don't know website. what Tezos does as a business either. Like I'm still confused. There, I've been at their website earlier today looking for this, and I don't know what product they offer or what they do to make money either. Like, is this also just a made up thing or? Well, they're I, I'm pretty sure they actually develop blockchain tech, so they um have professional. I mean, if that's even a thing, you know, professional blockchain um coders, uh, engineers who are working on developing new types of eco-friendly alternative blockchains that don't uh, destroy the environment, which I guess means doesn't need, you know, 50 GPUs just to mine a... The uh, veneer at the uh, mercy of this company who won't give out the information for how their stuff is authorized and verified and then... Probably. Like, if they're not showing public proof and it's not open source, how do you you know you're not being screwed like it's i don't fucking know i'm sorry uh, i didn't mean <laughs> i don't fucking know uh yeah, no am i trying to redeem the more cursing so i had to I had to give it to him yeah. um, you know what yeah fuck everybody fuck the chat too exactly this this I, all i have to say is this whole yeah th- this entire uh news article this segment it, ho ass blockchain it's, it's bullshit right it, it's all bullshit yeah, let's move on. Yep. Yeah, let's move on. <laughs> uh, no, but yes, uh, Misfits Gaming, Tezos, new blockchain partnership, new uh, cryptocurrency esports partnership. It's going to keep happening. We're going to keep seeing these. Like I said, uh, last time we reported on one of these, um, it's just it's not going anywhere. Uh, esports orgs and cryptocurrency, they're just kind of finding themselves hand in hand right now. Uh, it's just two spheres that uh, have their views aligned. Um, so, yeah going to see these partnerships showing up um and hopefully it'll allow misfits to uh do better things in the future we'll find out but let's move on to our last story though uh a really nice a very uplifting heartwarming story from uh, a high school that's actually going a little bit further than most do um some high schools have like an esports club you know they'll let you uh bring your switch or you know, uh, maybe even use the computer lab to play some Rocket League or, uh, you know, something like that. Um, some Fortnite, if you will. But mm-hmm. Southwestern High School is actually um, opening up a brand new center, an entire, like, gaming space called the Trojan Center. Uh, it's it's not just an esports club anymore. This is an entirely new uh, area for over 50 students, uh, 50 students to train, practice on some brand new setups um, donated from a few different companies in their area. I mean, this basically rivals what you would see on a college campus um, in their esports uh, areas. Uh, this is really cool. Um, Rod, since you were the one who brought this to my attention, what, what do you think about this? This is pretty nice stuff. Um, yeah, I love news like this. Um, yeah. I think anything that, you know, pushes the next generation of gamers to be the talented people that they are going to be, you know, in the future, I'm, I'm sold. And I think it it works really well when it comes from like these one-off schools. Like, you know, we've always heard stories for years, even when we were younger, there's those schools in California, all those kids get laptops to take home or iPads. I mean, even myself, like I remember hearing that as a kid, but now we're starting to see some of these more one-off areas really step into the forefront. And, uh, you know, maybe give the kids something a little bit different than what they're probably used to. You know, even here in Nebraska, I've seen other schools try like an esports club, a gaming club. We had a, a Nintendo club after high school and I graduated in 2011. 
but I think it hits a little bit different. All right. And I've never been on this end of things, but it hits a little bit different when you start getting financial backing, because that means now you've sold this to the higher reps and they're starting to see the future in this. Um, I think that when it comes to esports and selling it to kids, obviously what's going to get them in the doors, come play video games, come talk some shit, come do it at a competitive level. But there are other avenues in esports that I think could branch off from just this initial blow up here. Um, of course, everybody wants to be a player. You could be personalities and hosts, you know, like all of us on this call. You could be organizers. You could be a developer. Like there are some people who specifically just want to go into more competitive games, uh, you know, to further that as opposed to maybe doing things with like Breath of the Wild or like Kirby or some shit. You know, I just did an interview with one of the developers from Nickelodeon and he was like, competitive games were my things. I love all games. But I got introduced to this at a young age, and this is what's getting me up out of the bed in, in the morning. So I I love this. And I hope that they've turned those 50 kids into 150 kids in a year. And now they get their own, you know, uh, God, what's the, you know, you have schools, but then they, like, become more tech-oriented. Um, They call them, like, I don't know what the fuck they call them, magnet schools or some shit like that. I hope they go into something more like that where it's more gaming-focused. And they can just build strong players. I mean, there's just really nothing negative yeah. about this. I mean, I, I think that's great. Like, one of the things I really helped, like, I kind of grew up in, like, not the greatest environment. And I think, like, I wish I had, like, shit like this, you know what I'm saying? Like, anything that, uh, like, helps students, kids, whatever, like, get more into game is dope. Because this game is just a fucking great place to be a part of. You know, there's weirdos everywhere, of course. But I think centralized, like, the core aspect of the game community is pretty dope. So, I mean, I, I can't see a negative about this, man. This is... It's a definition of a feel-good story, if you ask me. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, Great. It, when you talk about capacity for over 50 students, yeah, like that's crazy. That's commitment, you know what I mean? Like, that means that, that actually... The start, too, is, is huge, because there's yeah. plenty of room to grow. Yeah, so they're they're setting up, an like, a real campus for uh, eSports, for their, for their students, um, to not only, like I was saying, to practice, train, and everything, but they could even host their own little tournaments, you know, with uh, setups... Uh, like that so yeah that's really cool for them um like yeah like you were saying i i would have loved to have something like this in my high school uh you know when i was a kid i mean this this would have been really sweet uh we didn't have anything like this at all not even close like we had computer labs um and i did play on a tournament on some of those computers but that was that was my own doing nobody knew about that and they definitely did not want me hosting that on the network drive and telling all my friends in the computer lab how to find it and where i hit it and how to play lay on unreal tournament with me you uh, nerd. <laughs> that was a lot of fun yes, we had to do it ourselves there was no there was no companies donating uh setups and designating entire areas to our esports endeavors you uh, have the blockchain trying to sign you all the time and yeah <laughs> didn't have didn't have any blockchain didn't have anything like that it was not carbon neutral I'm telling you like millennials we were like the test subjects for like a lot of shit that's happening now. Like they knew it was going to work on Generation Z and whatever the hell else letter generation is after them because they tried it on us first, right? This is the first generation of young people dealing with the internet. See how it works. If they fuck with it, then the next generation is definitely going to love it. it. And it does suck. Like it hurts. I wish I, wish I would have had this. But I mean, we had stuff similar. I mean, we had basketball clubs after school and then you know, if you get enough signups, you know, you can challenge other basketball after yeah. school programs, whatever. Cool. But the fact that they're doing this now with video games is like, yo, I wonder where they got the idea to do this type of shit from. But it also helps now, though, that young people, I mean, I guess we're still young, but, you know, we are now the ones that can call the shots and make sure that we can see the stuff that we wanted to see and make sure that we see the stuff that we think these next generation of young people want to see as well. Be the change you want to be, Rod. There you go. Starts there with the man go. in the mirror. That's right. All right. That's going to do it for our Wide World of Esports episode 123. That's right. One, two, three is done. Just like that. Hell Thank yeah. you so much for being here. I think we'll get into a tiny bit of sauce talk. We got a little bit of sauce talk in us. Uh, just a few. Just a few saucy talks. Uh, first on the sauce talk agenda today is uh, Jones for a weed soda. That's right. Jones soda, one of my personal favorite carbonated beverages mm -hmm. uh is unveiling a brand new cannabis infused line uh called mary jones uh very clever uh 
yeah, I want it. I, I, I'm I'm all about this all day, mm-hmm. all, all all day long. Tell them. I mean, I will say this. I have watched some homies, you know, smoke some weed, you know, do some CBD oils, like all that type of stuff, you know, take some dabs. I have never seen my boys get put on their ass as hard as they did. We were leaving ComplexCon in 2018. Uh, that was the same weekend as I, I want to say BlizzCon. So there's like just a strange mix of like, Sneaker streetwear hype beast people and gamer people all coming together. So you already know my wheels are moving. I was like, yo, this is my scene. You said BlizzCon. You sure somebody ain't get GHB? <laughs> oh, craps. Oh, I'm what sorry. Is, what does that mean? What's, what's GHB? Do I need to know? Uh, no, you don't need to worry about it. Don't go with your story. Sorry. All right. No, you're all good. But anyway, I got a buddy. I call his real name's Abdallah. All right. But his nickname is Diddy. You know, we call him Diddy because he looks like Diddy. You know, he has the skinny head and shit. So we're kicking it. And he has an unfortunate displeasure of always being stopped in the airport because his name is Diddy, you know. So TSA, they're just going to pick on him and it's fucked. So he's trying to come through and he has like this big ass, like, you know, we fucking you no know, drink. So they're like, yo, you either got to chug that shit right now or you got to toss it. So Diddy looks at me and I'm like, hey, I don't really partake in these activities. So it's up to you. And he just chugged it. He had like two on him, just gulped it and killed it. This dude. <laughs> He was not doing well. I mean, and he has smoked weed for as long as I've known him, which has been at least, you know, 14, 15 years. This had my man leaning on the plane. Yeah, the edible version hits differently than the smoke version, even if it came from the exact same flowers. So I could see, yeah. Uh, it yeah. also lasts way longer when it is imbibed through your body's digestive system. Yeah. So, yeah, was, he was probably, he, uh, had a, he had a flight and a half, I bet. Yeah, my man was, uh, he was on another planet. You know, I just kept looking back at him and like, he's just, he's completely zonked. But I mean, he had a good time and it, it did what it was supposed to do. It was supposed to put you on your ass and damn it, he got his money's worth. Hell yeah. Um, I mean, it's just, what you know, you can't go wrong with any kind of weed product, I don't think. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, shit, you're just infusing some soda with some weed? So, I mean, I don't really drink soda like that, but... You know, I could be tempted to at least try it just off the fact, just off the strength that's got some fucking chronic in it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just hope that the uh, the bottle and all that stuff is not drawn up and marketed in a way that would attract children or underage users. Other than that, go for it. Well, I mean, it could be either way. They're not going to sell it to them, so then. Well, like there. you know, don't put Bugs Bunny on the on the the jar. <laughs> they put Bugs Bunny on the jar. They got bigger fish to fry. Than well, that. yeah. I agree. I agree. I agree. No, this is great. I mean. This is one of the first sauce talk topics where I'm just absolutely all in 100%. Uh, It's two things that I absolutely love. You're telling Um, me you weren't 100% all in on the donuts that had Twix inside of it? (laughs) Maybe not 100%. I I had a a tiny bit of self-reservation there, a little bit of guilty. The tiny bit of self-respect you've got left. You didn't didn't like the sweets? You didn't like the sweets that had the ceviche on them? You didn't like that? No, no, thank you. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> but yeah, this is this is great. This is dope. I hope I can find some of this in my local stores uh, around me soon. Um, and if I do, I will definitely buy some Mary Jones soda, and I will report back on the show. Well, Jones is out of the Pacific you know Northwest either way, right? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, yeah so I'm, I'm not sure. I think you're going to have to be our taste tester out on the street. Yeah, I think so. Uh, you know how Definitely it is. get that 1,000 milligram SERP container. I want to see you chug it here on the stream. <laughs> the, it, it was saying how they have like they're going to do it in 10 milligram 12 ounce bottles. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's considered a single dose, or the 100 milligram 16 ounce can, which is meant to be split into 10 servings. Uh, yeah, I would probably do that one 16 ounce can. That, no, that you should do that 1,000 milligram SERP container. Thousand. I can zip, hand- zip that shit. <laughs> that would get me leaning for sure. I do like how they are offering a tincture though, uh, for people who want to do the tincture yeah. route or use it as a flavoring, um, or mix it in, you know, mixing into other drinks or putting in their soda stream, man, that's, that's how you do. That's how you save money. You get a soda stream. That's how some, you put your kids to sleep for <laughs> 19 hours. Yeah, some cannabis syrup and there you go. Uh, don't, don't do that. People don't, 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 uh, drug your kids. Or do. I don't Unless know. it's don't, convenient. Don't me. I'm not telling you how to raise your children. Oh, you give them some Minadryl here and there. You guys do not need kids. <laughs> not at all. All right, let's move on. Uh, our next story for Sauce Talk is, uh, I guess Taco Bell's making food. 
I mean, they, they do that. Taco Bell makes food. You know, they put together things. Uh, they have five new breakfast box items along with a new Cinnabon Delights coffee coming out. Uh, cool. Good for them. Yeah, I'm Taco sold. Bell's always had an elite breakfast. Um, so I, I'm, I'm with it. Taco, yeah, Bell, I'm kinda, Taco Bell breakfast is good. Elite? Same. Yeah, it's I, very I good. sold on most fast food breakfasts. I'm with you, Phil. Like, I, yeah, it's very good. Yeah. yeah I don't know if I can call it. It's it's not bad. It's not Carl's Jr. breakfast. It's, it's, okay. it's you know. It's not, yeah, they don't do offer that. a made from scratch pork chop and gravy biscuit, so we can't be throwing that E word around. It's very good. It's so, not the upper it's echelon, tasty. it's very good. Quite tasty. Gets the, gets the job tasty. done. Gets the, and, yeah, I agree. Like Wendy's breakfast, you know, that's like in my world, that's elite for me. Like Wendy's breakfast is, is then breakfast taters at Wendy's are elite. They, it's, it's, I'm like, whoa, people are I've sleeping on these things, crack, but yeah, they are. I've never had crack, but I think that's the closest thing to it. And, uh, you know, I think Taco Bell kind of dabbling in the whole breakfast thing. I'm, I'm interested to see how it goes. You know, they've tried some things and I've actually been, I think I've been a little sour to Taco Bell these last so many months, you know, with us doing sauce talk. But when we went to New York for um, uh, for Let's Make Big Moves, I had the wings and I had some of the drinks. I'm like, you know what? For Taco Bell, this actually ain't bad. I'm curious to see what they'll do next. You tried this shit when it comes out. It was, you know, it was... I was sure it was squirrel meat, you know, of some sort, but you know what? Yeah, squirrel meat would be too expensive for Taco Bell. Mm, Ritz and salmon sounds good. Yeah, I, I tried that. How did they get the entire okay. cinnamon bun into that cup? I'm not sure. I think it's, uh, I don't know. I, I'm definitely not into any Cinnabon, Delight, coffee, whatever. That's not for me. Um, I I'm do into that burrito, though. Breakfast, though. Uh, yeah, the burrito's fine. The hash brown looks good. Um, yeah, I'm down for it. Uh, it looks like a nice box. Um, cool. Good job, Taco Bell. Yes, sir. All right, we got one more thing to show you, though. Sauce Talk is almost over. But then there was a post on Twitter. And it just completely, uh -oh. completely changed the way I look at pizza. I oh. mean, you thought... Pineapple on pizza was crazy. You thought, you know, people were doing it weird by putting the sauce on top of the cheese or maybe just not even cooking the pizza at all. Like they're doing this, like this Pittsburgh style or whatever, where they just put the cold cheese on it and call it a day. That's not pizza. Um, but this thing, this thing is just wild. Uh, it's like a chicken and waffles slice with the biggest waffle pieces like there's just these giant Belgian waffle cups on top of this pizza with uh, some white meat chicken nuggets. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Um, I don't know, Rod. You know, what's funny about my relationship with pizza is that, you know, when I was living in Jersey for a little bit, we go over to the city, you know, have pizza X, Y, and Z. And I just feel like I've had a lot of different foods, you know, a lot of tasty shit all across the world. You know, pizza is just pizza for me. But then we went to one spot that was right next to the venue, and it had like a uh, – what type of pizza was that, Phil? It was some type of pizza, and then like they had honey on it and stuff. That was pretty good. So now my world was kind of opened up because now I'm thinking maybe what I've been doing wrong is I've been having just regular style pizza. Maybe I need to have my pizzas a little bit sweeter, you know, a little bit of, you know, savoriness with my sweetness or whatever. And uh, when it comes to something like this, I think – I'm all in. I mean, we already did chicken and waffles. Like, when we went to Genesis a couple years ago, we went like six times in the weekend or something. Like, I'm oh, already yeah, we sold. destroyed that. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that man is hurt that Genesis isn't in Oakland anymore because we would tear that place up. So, I mean, if this pizza can kind of recreate that magic for me, I'm already broke. So, take my money. I mean, pizza's, inter if pizza, uh, pizza's interesting, especially like New York. Like, so I saw definitely saw something similar like this, like Rob, like, like Rob was saying, like to one of the New York places that we went to. So this isn't like uncommon. I think I had like a chicken and honey pizza if it was. So you know, just didn't have the chunks of um, waffle on top, which looks actually amazing. So looks like a dub. I definitely try it. It's probably good as shit. And that's, you know, it's, it's definitely one of those messy pizzas, right? So you need a lot of napkins to accompany yeah. that something to drink. Um, but yeah, it looks good to me. I try it. Reason not to. 
I'm not a big fan of maple syrup. I would try it. Yeah, Kala and Davis in chat talking about hot honey. Yeah, Mike's hot honey is delicious. I I love that. The hot honey. Uh, I, I will. Yeah, I will put that on pizza anytime. Um, but yeah, it's just. I mean, I would actually if you replaced the maple syrup with hot honey, mm. I would be more inclined to try it. Um. Yeah, I'd give it a go, but I I don't know about the whole slice, dude. I don't know about the whole slice. That's a lot. You can't do the whole slice? That's a lot, man. That's a... Uh, oh, Brian, come one on. One slice, man. not one pie. We can that's, handle it. that's all we're eating at the cookout, man. I thought you were coming through. I mean, you you, that's, all you got, that's all you got at the cookout? You're telling me the cookout just has chicken and waffles pizza? And that's it? All that's the all women I've seen you kiss over the years, and you won't eat this slice of pizza. Whoa. I mean, minute. if you have to revoke my invite, you got to do it. But uh, I want to. That's yeah, the problem. Come yeah. on, come I would. On. I feel like I would try. I, I would try it, but yeah, I don't. I don't think I'd be able to throw down with the whole thing. I no, would. No. I, I think I would get tired of that after one bite. Exactly. Army of Techno says we have to revoke your invite. Now I, I don't. Done. I don't want to, but it's just. It's just bread and chicken and a little bit of syrup. What? What if we change the the sweet? a little bit of syrup? That's a gallon on there. Okay. Well, what is? What if we change the, the the sweetness? What if we change it to something else that you like? Like, does it? It doesn't have to just be the syrup, does it? Like, That's what I'm saying. If you change it to hot honey, I, I think I'd be more inclined to jam okay. on that. Okay. Fair mm. enough. I mean, the whole base of a cookout is to enjoy, you know, enjoy what you like there. I'm sure there'll be options to select. You might get some side looks, but hey, end of the day, man, just at the end of the day, just make sure you at least try it. Yeah. Now, the whole thing, just try it. It makes it me, it people are just, big mama's house at the cookout. And I will just exactly, I will just try anything. I will try anything, okay. of course. There you go. There That's you all go. I need to hear. You're it makes me happy that people are just showing up and wondering what the hell is going on. That's my homie Ian. <laughs> What's going on, homie? <laughs> <laughs> just yeah, this is probably not the exact thing you expect to see on Wide World of Electronic Sports, but this is definitely the kind of thing you can expect to see on Sauce Talk. As we'll be bringing this all day on Sauce Talk. Uh, so yeah, I guess the consensus is most people would try this. Most people would be down with the chicken and waffle slice. Uh, a couple people in chat were not not feeling it, but I I I, I, th I feel like I think the general consensus, the 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 overall vibe I'm getting is that people are down. There yeah, I mean anything chicken and syrup related. I'm sorry, I just I can't even I can't even hide it anymore. It's coming out, yo. I need it. Damn. Yeah, that, I'm with you, Kala. We got this. Get that hot honey on there. All right, that's going to do it for Sauce Talk. Uh, that'll wrap it up. We do have one more quick thing to touch on, though. And that's the Cortex winner of the week. The Shaq Pets Showdown, if you will. And people, 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 you know the score. All of you good people out there in chat. All of you amazing do it for Shaq newsers out there. It's not Mad Dog. Mad Dog didn't win. Bishy. Can, can, can I get a Daggy Ma? Can I get a Daggy? <laughs> I mean, dang. Yeah, didn't win. Eight Mikey won it again. Eight Mikey mm. on the board again. Winning Shaq News. Uh, winning Cortex with those Shaq Pets points. Uh, Ninja Say is uh, our chatty winner. So Mad Dog wasn't even the chatty winner either. Uh, yeah, I don't know what to expect. I don't know what's going on. All I know is that 8 Mikey has found his place in the universe. And Ninja Say is doing all right on chatty. Good for you, Sex Ninja. Uh, getting your name out there and winning chatty again. Second week in a row. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, that's, that, that's pretty much our report for Cortex winner. Uh, yeah, Mad Dog's washed. I don't know what's happened. He's, uh, yeah, he's busy. He's a busy off. guy. He's a busy you know, guy. It, We're going to name it today. He's a busy guy. Yeah, it's, it's hard work winning all the time. I get it. You know, I'm, I'm used to winning myself. I'm something of a winner myself, but you know, it, I get it. I get it. Wait, what's, what's so, you don't think I'm a winner? You a winner? No. no. Whoa. Wow. Wow. You are, wow, wow. You are definitely a winner, Rod. You okay. are an ultra winner. Oh, thank you. You're just you laughing at the way you put it. You have to be a winner to uh, have something like Rodfest 2K22 
going yeah, down. We're, we're serving grits for everybody and a chicken and waffles pizza, and we'll pay out everybody an EE coin on the blockchain. Ain't that right? EE coin That's on the right. blockchain. And we're trying to it. save up money so we can hire Tone Loke to, to play the show. <laughs> <laughs> he no, costs right. $7,200. Why the 200 though? Like, how did he. It, because he's I worth know. more than the people that sang that crazy town butterfly song. They only want 7,000. Ah. I pay the extra for tone. There you go. I'm signed. I'm signed up. Well, make sure you get signed up for Shaq news cortex. Make sure you get signed up for Shaq news, Shaq pets. Make sure you just get signed up for Shaq news in general. And that way you can earn all of those cool Shaq points. You can earn them by doing pretty much anything on the website at Shaq news.com. Your latest and greatest in gaming and technology news for over 25 years now. Uh, but yeah, literally anything you do over there is going to get you points. Reading articles, posting in the chatty, uh, ingesting feeds, YouTube uh, channels, and all sorts of cool things into Shack News Reader. Um, using Shack News Cortex, like I was saying, making Cortex posts. Uh, all of that stuff will get you great points. But Shack News, the, the Shack Pets app, the absolutely free Shack Pets app, that is how you get the big points. That's how you find yourself in the upper echelon with the eight Mikeys and the Mad Dogs, the mans with the briefcases and all of them. Yes, that's how you get up there. And the uh, man with the briefcase is not even trying. Like, he, he really isn't. He's just got Lola's doing all the work. She's the chair pet of the board. She's obviously got uh, a lot of work ahead of her. But she doesn't have to work that hard on Shaq Pets. The points just... They just come on in. So, uh, yeah, check out the app, upload some pictures of your pets, and you'll see how easy it is and how you can get those Shaq points rolling in. And maybe I'll be talking about you on the Cortex winner of the week, the Shaq Pets Showdown, the wrap-up for our show, because that is going to wrap it up. That's episode 123 done on the books. Thank you, everybody, for supporting us throughout another week of Wide World of Electronic Sports. Thank you to Krabs, Chris Gerard, for his technical direction and uh, excellent insight in all things um, animals and their colors. Uh, don't 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 paint your animals, people. Mm -hmm. don't, don't, do that. <laughs> don't do it. Thank you to Rodney Conyers Jr. for all of your awesome topics, all of your uh, great stories. Uh, appreciate your help in putting together the agenda every single week, and really just chatting with you. It's it's been a pleasure. As always, my brother. We'll uh, we'll be back next Monday for some more stuff. So I'm excited. That's to right. Going. And thank you to the specter of Phil Visu, the mystery man who I think was Phil. Appreciate you being here. Appreciate your hot takes and all of your saucy talk as well. It is always my pleasure, my friend. I will be in my full form next week, fear not. Excellent. Um, and yes, stay tuned because we have big things planned, of course. We uh, will still have some special guests upcoming. Uh, not going to reveal who yet. But uh, we've had some amazing interviews um, so far in the in the past few weeks. So if you missed any of those interviews, I'm talking Supergirl Kells, Technicals, talking um, who else do we have? We had just lots of great people already. I mean, uh, you, you have to check those out. Um, if, if you missed those, you can go back in the VODs and see them. But like I was saying, it's not over. We're going to have more awesome guests coming. Uh, we're going to have more awesome shows. So make sure you stay tuned. Make sure you follow the channel. Make sure you subscribe. Do all those great things. Until then, we're going to get out of here. See everybody. Bye-bye now.